So in my last video, I talked about using sunshine plus moonlight to access your desktop remotely. So I figured I'd make a video showing you how to set up sunshine and moonlight to get your desktop streaming on Fedora 41. And the reason for this is it's not quite as simple as just point and click install. There is a bit of configuration that you need to do. Now, if you go through the built-in discover installer in Fedora on KDE, and you look up Sunshine, you can find a flat pack. I found that the flat pack had some permissions issues and it didn't work right out of the box for me. And so I'm not going to be installing it using the flat pack. So I'm going to install this from the Fedora Copper or COPR repository. So this is kind of similar to the AUR, if you're familiar with that from Arch. These are community built packages, so they are not actually part of Fedora, but they are built for Fedora by the community. And Lizard Bytes, which is the development group behind Sunshine, has a copper repository out there. And so there are these three stable beta and pulls. I'm going to run the beta, but if you want the stable version, all you're going to have to do is just change beta to stable in the command that I'm about to use. Now, within these repositories, you will see packages already built for Fedora 39, 40, and 41. So I'm just going to open up a terminal and I'm going to do sudo dnf, then we're going to do copr, then we're going to do enable, and this is going to be basically the name that you see here of whichever repository you want to be using. So I'm going to do lizard byte forward slash, and again, I'm going to run the beta because that's most similar to what I had installed earlier. Now, once you enter your password, it's going to give you a little warning. It says, hey, look, this is not part of your main distribution and the quality of these repos may vary, blah, blah, blah. It's basically just saying, hey, look, this is not Fedora's fault if these things don't work. So I'm going to hit yes. And now the repository has been enabled. And so now I do a sudo DNF install sunshine. So now that it's ran, it's found the Sunshine package out there in the repository we just added. So I'm going to hit yes to install it. Now, there's another thing that we need to do if we want to use Sunshine to access our desktop remotely, which is make sure that Sunshine is running without us having to start it ourselves. So I'm going to show you one of the files that we just installed that we're going to need to activate, basically. And so I'm going to move to a different directory just to show you the file. So I'm going to do a CD. We're going to go to USR forward slash lib system D user. OK, so within this directory, I'm just going to do a DER just to show you what's in this directory. And if I scroll up just a little bit right here, you'll see that there's a file called sunshine.service. And what this is is just going to be a little script that will start Sunshine for us. And it's a service file, which means we can activate it and make the system run this for us, i.e. get our computer to start Sunshine for us whenever the computer starts up. Now, if you want to see what's in that file, we can just run nano. So do nano and then I'm going to do a dot forward slash. That's going to tell it to look within the directory we're already in. Sunshine.service. And here is the file that I just showed you, right? And it's just going to say, hey, here's some stuff that you want to do. And the service, it's basically going to start the executable out of user bin sunshine. And that's what it's going to do. And uh, that's it, right? So this thing's just going to get it started up for us. So I'm going to do control X to exit because we aren't changing anything there. So we just need to make sure that this thing is started and running and it doesn't get kicked out whenever we're logging in, logging out, stuff like that. All right. So we're going to do system CTL and double dash then user. And so this is saying, hey, uh, system, here's a user service and we want to enable sunshine. And so this will basically be whenever we log in that it's going to start this service for us. And here you can see that it found this file so it knows what it's doing. And then we're going to start it. So we're going to do the same thing, systemctl, double dash user, then start sunshine. Now this is basically a manual starting of this service. 
All right, now, as soon as I did that start command, you'll see down here on my taskbar, the logo for Sunshine has popped up. So that's what that start command does. It actually started it manually. The enable means it's gonna do it for us whenever we log into the system. And then I'm gonna do something else, which is basically gonna enable the service to stay around, even if we log out. And so this, I'm gonna do a sudo login control or login CTL enable dash linger and then dollar sign user and so basically this is going to allow us to kind of keep these services running password okay and then we're going to do another system ctl user and then we're going to do daemon and that's the d-a-e-m-o-n dash re execute all right, so now we should have user lingering enabled. All right, now before we reboot, which will be the way that we're gonna test this, I am gonna just check to make sure that everything's running. And if you wanna see that your service is running, I'm gonna do systemctl status sunshine. And I forgot to tell it that it is a user service. So we look at this, it says, look, this service is enabled. So it should start up whenever we log in. It says that it is currently running, so we could use it right now if we wanted to. So you hit Control C to get out of this. Next, we're gonna check to see that our user account services will linger even if we log out. So we're gonna do that login CTL, show dash user. And then we're gonna do a grep linger and it says yes so our account should linger even if we log out sunshine should keep running and so this service should be basically running all the time on the computer so in order to test this what i'm going to do is i'm going to just do our system restart so the video is going to cut whenever we come back i'll be logged back in and so what you want to see is if you shut everything down and reboot your computer and log in you should automatically see the little logo for sunshine pop up in your system tray that's how you know yep this thing will come on automatically and so that way even if you're not at your computer whenever you go to access it you will be able to because sunshine will already be running so I'm going to shut this down and then I'll reboot and then I'll be right back. All right, so just log back in and all I've done is started up OBS and sure enough, we've got Sunshine down here. Now, we're not quite done because now we actually have to get the program set up. And so if you click on it and say open Sunshine, so you'll see that you're probably going to get some security warning. Don't worry, it's just accessing locally. There's no big deal here. So you just go to advance, proceed, and here you go. All right, this is the first thing you got to do. And... What we need to do is set up a password, all right? So this is just, you know, put in whatever username you want and whatever password you want. This is gonna control the admin account, basically. So if you ever wanna modify your Sunshine settings on your host computer, the one that you're gonna be streaming from, this is how you do it. You go to the web interface and you have to log in. So set up a login, whatever you want it to be. Okay, so now once you're logged in, you'll see it's gonna tell you what version you're running. I'm running the beta, so you can see it says I'm running a pre-release version, so I may encounter bugs. You've got some other things here. So the actual setup is gonna come, well, you can do applications, right? And so this is where you can share different features of your computer. So it comes with some stuff pre-installed. One is your desktop. The other would be a low resolution desktop in case you're on a bad connection, you might wanna use that. And then it's also got one for Steam. I think, and I have not tried this because I haven't used this for game streaming, but I believe you could actually add a specific game as an application and that might give you better performance than trying to stream your whole desktop and the game included. Again, take that with a grain of salt. I have not actually done that myself. But these settings are not really what we're going to be worried about. We're going to go into configuration. And here's where you can really get into all the details of your streaming. Because again, this is going to use your hardware to encode a video. And so you can tell all types of stuff in here. So like gamepad, keyboards, mouse, audio video setup, what type of GPU you want it to use, what display you want it to stream. 
network configuration, port setup. And once you get over here to the advanced and the encoder stuff, you can really even get to the details of how you want this thing encoded. So I'm using an NVIDIA GPU, so I want to use the NVIDIA encoder. And so it gives you all the different variables that you can pick on your NVIDIA encoder. Now, that's basically it on the configuration side on Sunshine. So we're pretty much done on the host computer. Now we've got to set up the client with Moonlight to actually access this desktop. Okay, so for Moonlight, just Google Moonlight Stream and go to their website. And here, there's really not much to do. We're just going to go to the client downloads. And I'm on Windows for my client, so I'm just going to click on Windows takes you to their GitHub. So obviously, uh, you know what to do. Take your installer and install it. Now, once the installer is done, we're just going to open Moonlight. And there's much less setup here. But you'll see, as soon as I open Moonlight, it actually shows me a computer. So on Moonlight, I'm going to click on it. And you'll see it gives me a number. It says, hey, please enter 4197 on your host PC. Now, this is the one-time setup. And so you do have to pair these things. So back over on my desktop where my Sunshine server is, I'm entering that number. and now these two computers are paired. And that means that's basically it. Once you've paired your computers, you don't have to pair them again. So now I'm gonna be able to access the computer where Sunshine is, the server, anytime I want from wherever I want using the computer running Moonlight. And so if I access my desktop, and now you'll see my configuration's actually a little weird right here. Uh, and the reason is, is that I have actually shared the wrong monitor. And so one of the things about this is um, you do kind of configure with multi-monitor support which particular monitor you want streamed. And I have the wrong one. So to fix this, I'm going to go to audio video. Now down here, you'll see that there's a thing called display number. And I need to change that because basically all that's happened is I've got the wrong display sharing. So you can fix this. You want to go up here into troubleshooting. And if I scroll all the way down at the very beginning, you'll see my monitor list here. And what's happened is that it's defaulted to monitor zero, which is not the right one. I want monitor one, which is the actual main display that I use for my desktop. Now you can also, by the way, just turn off your multi-monitors and then it will only have one display and that always works, which is nice on a headless kind of remote setup. You can turn all your monitors off and this configuration won't really have any impact. So I'm going to change my display to one and hit save. And it says, look, this is going to terminate any running sessions and it says click apply to restart sunshine. So down here at the bottom, I'm going to hit apply. And now you can see that my moonlight got kicked out. And now if I reaccess that desktop, it should be using the main monitor. And sure enough, there you go. All right, now the initial quality wasn't great. So here's where the settings in moonlight can help. And so I'm gonna come over here to my resolution and FPS. I'm going to go to native resolution. And then on the video bitrate, you can increase this. So I'm just gonna max this out because I am on my home network. And you can also put this thing into windowed mode or full screen mode, whatever you want. You can change a bunch of settings on the audio. And again, this is basically gonna change the client side. It's not gonna increase the quality of the video that's being generated by your computer. It's basically going to uh, change what the client sees, but you can always change your encoder settings in Sunshine, again, to take advantage of this thing. I'm also gonna switch over to H.265 because I believe that the NVIDIA graphics card should be able to do that. Now, whenever I go back and I access my desktop, you'll see that everything looks quite a bit sharper because again, I'm just running a much higher bit rate, much higher resolution. Uh, lag in this setup is pretty minimal um, currently. Now, keep in mind, I'm on my home network. Uh, there's very little latency between these two computers, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty much real time, I would say. So that's it. I mean, that that's the whole thing. You know, at this point, I've got a high quality streaming desktop. You know, if I want even more quality, I can go up into my encoder settings and I can actually change this performance. And let's go blast it all the way to highest. Hit save. Hit apply. Now I'm going to have to redo my client side access. 
restart that. And now without really uncorking the bit rates, uh, which there is a setting to uncap bit rates and go above 150 megabits per second, uh, this is about as good as it gets. And it is a very high quality um, interaction. And with the 60 FPS feed, you know, again, latency is very, very low. There's very low lag. I believe in my last video, I'd actually had it set to 30 FPS. Um, and that was probably where the lag was coming from. Now using 60 FPS, there's hardly any lag in this interface. So that's it, that's the whole setup. As always, if uh, you got any questions, comments, or feedback, uh, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching.